How How long long has this been? been? Years Years since the tournament. tournament. And And I I push push on. on. I can can smell smell it in the air. air. The The next next pack. pack. The next next box. box. Every Every common. common. Every rare, every super, every ultra, every secret. I'm hungry for action. I'm hungry for a duel. been at this for 20 episodes. Do we have a winning record to show for it? No, we do not. But we are going to open some product that will probably seem familiar so that we can gradually build this thing to actually, you know, get some wins under our belt. We're hunting an elusive piece of our extra deck today. And then we're going to try to get back onto our winning ways and get another winning record and a win streak going. So that's the plan for today. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll jump right into the product. No, we're not opening a whole box because that's above budget. But what we are going to do is we're going to open half. Because that's 36 bucks right there. At least based on the price that I paid for the box. And you may be wondering, 36, well, what are you going to fill the other $4 with? I saved up and I bought this blister at a Walmart some time ago. And I figured, you know, that's eh, 4 bucks. That's pretty cheap, especially considering how things have gone up. Anyway, um, so yeah. Let's not beat around the bush. We'll do 6 and 1. We'll make a gigantic sandwich. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sandwich. Voila. All right. Um, a rarity bump percentages would be cool, but you know, really, there's only one card we're after today. Ah, uh, Hayate. We're gonna set the Dragoonity cards down because we can. Rare pile, hollow, common pile. Um. Oh, I command thee to open Cybernetic Horizon. The useless Link Monster. Oh, look at that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing, I tell you. But it's okay. We just need an equalizer going second. A big old synchro that we can go into when our opponent cuts off our plays. Then we just make a big old synchro that banishes their entire field and can float when it leaves the field. It's a good monster. It's a great monster. Ascalon is an amazing synchro. Not the best synchro. (laughs) 
Dragoonity Knight Ascalon. First edition. Dragon Synchro Effect. One Dragoonity Tuner, one non tuner monster. So one, pl pl one or more non tuner monsters. You can banish one Dragoonity monster from your graveyard, then target one monster your opponent controls. Banish it. If the Synchro Summon card and its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can special summon one Dragoonity Synchro Monster with 3,000 or less attack from your extra deck. This is traded as a Synchro Summon. You can only use this effect of Dragoonity Knight Ascalon once per turn. The Banish attack effect is not once per turn. He's a big ol' level 10 Wind Dragon Synchro Monster, 3,300 attack, 3,200 offense. This is the monster doing battle with Trishula Sub-Zero, the Zero Freezing Retrain, and we finally have him. Oh my god, I don't even care what I get from the rest of the pack. We don't even really need to open the rest of the box. That's crazy. I mean, we could get a rarity upgrade of Boral Sword. That would be cool. Like, at this point, anything else? Well, let's shoot for a upgrade to our Senatus Cool. So we'll have a fully hollow playset of Senatus. Let's go with that. Oh my god. The hunt, we are actually finally done with Cybernetic Horizon. That is a beautiful thing to say. We no longer have to open these packs. Hooray! Anyway, um, yeah. Let's see what we can't get from Battles of Legend Armageddon. I believe the Synchro's at the front because Konami's in it very bad. Valerophon! He's a cute tuner. Invoked. This I always thought this looked like a gigantic fish. Numeron Wall. Hey! Book of Moon! Yo, the three Book of Moon! That's actually a good card. And it's a Synchro. Glacial Beast. I need to water. Useless. Useless. Absolutely useless. But um, I'll take the Book of Moon. Yeah, Book of Moon's a good card. Book of Moon, and I'll take that. That's a good side deck option. But Ascalon. Oh, that's all we need. All right, doesn't even matter what we get from the rest of these packs. Senate it. Oh! I'll take an Essie. I mean, I won't play it in this deck, but I will take a first edition Secret Rare Nessie. I will happily take a first, edi first ed Secret Rare Nessie. Huh. America. Let's build a pure danger deck. Noble Knight, Noble Useless, Absolutely Useless. Alright. Well, ah, it just feels so relieving not to... Realm of Danger! That's a useless ultra rare, but who cares? Who cares at this point? You know what, yeah, you guys can now go in the common pile, because we now actually don't have to set aside Dragoonities and make ourselves feel better. We pulled an Ascalon. We pulled an Ascalon. Oh. And early on, too. Couldn't have even came out at the end for this suspense. Hey, another, another Luin. That's cool. We've got plenty of Luins. Uh, Luin plus any of our, like, a uh, Garuda or any of our normal summon level fours, that also equals Ascalon. Plus a free extender. Basically, we now, let's say we lose the die roll. We actually now have something we can automatically go second that we don't have to side in or anything. So it feels so good to finally have them. Oh, I'm just so happy. Last pack. Last pack of the day. We're walking away today with an Ascalon and a Book of Moon is just a bonus. That is just glorious. Hippotioningen. You know, I don't even need to finish this box. I'm literally probably just going to open this box at another point, or just maybe use them for giveaways, I don't know. Yeah, but we don't, we'll see what happens when I do with the rest of the box. But all I know is I know we're not opening it any more Cybernetic Horizon for the rest of the series. It feels so good. And now let's put you in the deck.
One change. Can it make a difference? We're going to find out. At least hopefully we'll be able to use it going second to make stuff happen. On to the patron matches! Back to old school Yu-Gi-Oh, but um, I don't know how reliable the 2K wall will be when it can just be bounced back to the hand, and I get hit by bird feet. I get hit by the weird bird fetish deck, and um, yeah, quick easy clap. I have opened terribly, I'm not surprised in the slightest, but means we get to have another chance at going first, and this time around we actually have a very playable hand. We get access to our guard dragon plays, and luckily enough, we thin out the deck with our terraforming, so we have some at targets to add back with Saryuja to fix our hand and extend even further. And because we used a ducks for our starting play and not a senatus, we have the option to go into an Appaloosa, which we do for four materials. That's five negates on the board. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. That's, um... <sighs> yeah. And it doesn't really help that I can't get a comeback going also because whenever a spell is activated, the Harpy Synchro is able to bounce. And guess what? When equipped to a monster, the Dragoon Eddy Tuners act like spells. So all of my comeback potential is dead in the water. Yeah, that's a quick 2-0. But we move! And for the remote duel, we're going up against Live Twin Unchained. It's been a while since we've dueled at this matchup, but I do also do apologize. We had some trouble with the Discord call just going in and out. In and out, in and out. So if there's some freeze frames in the video, that's why. But long story short, we do have to play through a Skullmeister when we're trying to push through with some of our extensions and Ash Blossom, but. I mean, yeah, we just end on a gate. Unfortunately, we weren't, able, we weren't able to get into the Crystal Wing thanks to that Ash Blossom. And now we are just facing down some evil twins. I try to pop um, the revival effect, but it doesn't really matter. He's still able to pop off. And with the Unchained engine that he's running in the deck, he's able to link away with my Gator, leaving me with a completely open field. And now there's a pseudo Floodgate and Nightmare Griffin on the field. Luckily enough, though, that doesn't shut me off completely because I have my normal summons which are impactful, and then as long as something's linked, then it can activate its effect. So there are ways that I can play around. It's not the end of the world, but um, I'm already on the back foot. And um, when I normal summon my ducks, he uses his life to effects to bring it back. He pops the tuner, screws me over. I try to special summon my tempest that gets called by the grave. So yeah, we scoop. We move to game two. We get to go first properly this time, and um. You know, we open semi-decent, and we're able to climb up into a Crystal Wing, but also I have to play through a Skullmeister. So, you know, ending, pushing through and ending on just a single Crystal Wing after some interaction with my opponent, that's not terrible. And, um, yeah. <laughs> now, I do Cosmic the back row that he tries to set and pop with his Unchained to extend, and luckily enough that stops his uh, plays dead in the water. My Ducks does get solemned with another back row that he sets, but I still pile on the pressure bringing out my Tempest, bring him down to 1100 life points. And, um, yeah, it's basically the end of the game because my Crystal Wing can deal with any of the Unchained effects that he tries to activate, preventing him from getting any start off combos. But now it comes to game three, and I'm going second. And I open it kind of bad. My DD Crow is really my only saving grace in this hand. And, um, well, I try to fix it with a Dragon Tribe, but I, unfortunately I drew into the Tempest, which is ideally what I wanted to send because I had the Garuda in the hand, which would have opened up my combos, and then also I had, I had Dark Worm in hand as well, so both of my targets that I really want to send to the graveyard with Dragon Trine or something, or Dragon Ravine, yeah, they're in hand, so it's more so just Garuda beat down. But it doesn't matter because the live twin knit Link monsters summon, summon themselves out, bing, 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 they pop, they draw. And, um, yeah, I'm just a, a sitting duck, and my ducks get 
popped. So literally there's a response for every single part. I'm very normal with some reliance, so I lose because of that. But we move, at least we can try to scrape a win and, you know, keep our head held high. And we're going up against Witchcrafter, apparently. But, um, my patron Yara doesn't bricks. He draws only spells, which means we're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Old School in the beatdown. And we just take a very interesting game one, and we move on to game number two. And this time we're going second, and I do see some good going second cards, however, Madame Ver is a very, uh, tricky card to deal with and the ghost ogre kind of stops my place dead in the water so now I'm at the mercy of the witchcrafters I just have to hope that I can survive the battle phase hopefully his hiney will pop my ravine so that way you know yeah no it doesn't matter I get OTK now originally we had to redo the third game because EDO Pro, or EDO Pro just disconnected from us and um, let's just say the retry to game number three did not give me a very kind hand. I do get to bring out Ascalon, which is cool, and he floats into a gator, which I'm hoping will survive the turn so that I can get into a crystalline. Which, sure enough, I'm able to with the phalanx that I drew. Unfortunately, Ghost Orger can activate on the field, so I'm left completely open with a dead card in hand. And um, the Secret Village essentially is a death sentence for me, because that means I can't activate my tuners that are equipped. And... Uh, it's now the slow, grindy death. We can't activate anything because Madame Vare is also just a dumb floodgate of a monster with spells, and it can beat over anything as long as we've got plenty of spells in hand, which crafters are excel greatly in recycling the spells that are in their graveyard. So it's the long, slow, drawn out defeat, rubbing salt into the wound. Yeah. And even my Solemn's out of Solemn range, so it doesn't even matter. I just bluff my three back row and we lose. That's not ideal. We have 3 0 0 and 3. We did get a couple wins in, and the, but unfortunately, I didn't really get to use Ascalon going second, unfortunately, just to use some bricky hands. So, what this means probably is we're gonna have to go and rethink the deck. A little bit tweak some ratios see if that can't fix the problem but yeah that sucks and I will see you guys in the next episode